Hello and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals in Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges. And babe, I just want to say, first of all, I appreciate you so much for continuously listening to this show. This has been so scary. Putting on a new podcast, trying to figure out what people want to hear, wanting to use my voice, not knowing and you know what's going to be relevant, what's not going to be relevant, like wanting to be vulnerable, scared of being vulnerable. You know what? I just came to this point where I'm just like, fuck it. Like I get to be myself. I honor you for listening, for showing up, for like supporting. It means so much to me. And I also would love to hear, you know, your feedback, like what you want to talk about, because I feel like there's so many things that are happening currently in this industry that us as women are afraid to talk about. We're afraid to stand up. We're afraid to use our voice. I, I hear this time and time after again, where somebody is in a sales conversation and they feel like they were treated inappropriately. Or, you know, I have clients that, you know, deal with uh, horrific situations that, you know, completely break my heart. You know, one in three women have gone through some type of abuse and it just makes me so effing angry to understand that People have gone through things that are completely out of control and that it affects them mentally to this day. And so today I I wanted to just give you a few tools that would really, really help and support you. I remember going through a grocery store and I'm at the grocery store. This is, you know, five, six years ago and I'm shopping for groceries and I was by myself at this time and I had my grocery basket full. Like it was literally full to the top, like so many things. I had a whole entire list during the whole entire score. I was like counting how much everything is and I, I'm filling it up. I have dinner for each night of the week. I think I was like meal prepping at the time because I was in bodybuilding and like it was like a full cart. Like I was at the store for a good hour or so. And as I'm walking down the aisle, a somebody, some guy, he's like rushing through and he bumps my shoulder. He bumped me so hard that my whole understanding of what anything was like frozen time and as he bumped me it scared me so so bad that I started having a panic attack in the middle of this grocery store which is super frustrating especially if you want to be strong especially if you don't want things to affect you but because I had been through so much trauma in my life because I had been through so many like abusive situations in my life this triggered a trauma response in my body that I didn't know how to get out of I didn't know what to do. It, it bothered me so bad to where I was hyperventilating in the middle of the store. And I'm like trying to breathe, trying to breathe. And I literally have to leave the store, leave my grocery buggy in the middle of the store and leave. I go to the car. I'm in the car for a good 10, 15 minutes trying to breathe, trying to catch my breath back. And then I was so upset. I was, I was so mad that my body was having a panic attack that I was having a worse panic attack because I was so upset that I left. I left the store and I was so mad at myself. And that continuously happened to me over and over and over and over again. Small things, a little kid bump into me, something happened and like my body would go into a, a trauma response. And, um, you know, a one in three women go through something like this, you know, whether, you know, I don't know what you've been through, but, and I, and I'm so sorry for whatever you've gone through, but I, I, I want to be able to help you have some tools in your tool bucket if you've ever been able to experience anything like this or you know if your body's responding not in a way that you want it to I remember when my boyfriend told me that he loved me and my body started having a trauma response about that where I started crying profusively and like probably really freaked him out and my head was like, oh, I love you. My heart was like, oh, love. And my body's like, what the F is this? No, no, no. And I started freaking out and started crying. And he just like helped me. It was like, receive, everything's okay, feel safe. And I was so mad at my body that way. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because we all have trauma in our life. Like we've all been through some stuff and sometimes it comes up for us. And the reason why is because trauma is stored in your body. In fact, trauma is stored seven generations deep scientifically. Like trauma is passed down scientifically, genetically, seven generations deep. So what I'm processing today is not only my stuff, it's my mother's stuff, it's my grandmother's, my great, great grandmother, you know, great, 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 great. So many generations of people that have been through stuff and I'm processing that. Now, traditional therapy, 
Traditional therapy is normally Western medicine, which normally uses some type of talking about what's going on, which I think is really great. Talking about something, being able to communicate, writing something down in a journal, being able to get it out of you, I think is is really, really, really great, but I think it only does so much. What would it be like to take a step further? You know, intense trauma, you know, I've done so much uh, trauma intervention why, for myself as well as like for others. And what has really, really helped me is by somatically processing things out of my body. And I've used this for myself as well as for my daughter as well. And being able to have these tools in place has been really, really helpful in my life. The first thing is number one, giving yourself full permission to 100% play full out. What if you were going to really make the decision that you are going to face yourself and all the stuff that you've been through? And I know that it is the hardest thing to be able to have the courage to face yourself in the face and say, hey, this area of my life is not working and I'm going to find out how to heal from it. And that's hard. Like, especially like recently, you know, when I when I had this situation happen with my boyfriend, I I was so really mad at myself because I've done so much work and I could not believe that I was having a trauma response about receiving love. And that's partially due to like the last boyfriend I had like leaving me. I think that like my heart was just broken so much that my my body was like, hey, we're trying to keep you safe. And like we're putting up all these walls. And I was so angry about that. And I and I feel like sometimes when you do a lot of work, like it's really, really frustrating to be like, oh, there's another area we get to heal here. But I just want to tell you really fast, if you want to take the time to, first of all, stop and look at areas in your life that are not working and making the decision that you want to heal from them, you are courageous. Not everyone has the ability to do that. I just talked to um, somebody or heard a conversation this morning from a woman that had been through a lot that was like, I'm not ready to face it yet because if I face it, that means that it's true. And it breaks my heart because that's the very first step into wanting to free yourself from this. I don't want you to be in a place where anything or anyone ever has your power. Like it's not fair to you. You have complete freedom by freeing yourself from all the stuff that holds you back. And it is a long process. It doesn't happen overnight. Of course not. But you being able to be intentional about facing you is going to be the very first step here. Um, and again, first step is to play full out. Like you can't half ass this. This has to be like, I'm choosing to face this and I'm choosing to play full out and really, really work on whatever area is not working for me. There's so many different modalities that you could possibly use. And I'm not saying there's one right way or one wrong way. I think that we're all built differently, so differently beautiful and unique in our own way that you get to use whatever modality is working for you. But number two is, you know, being able to somatically get it out of your body. Trauma is stored in our body. Uh, trauma is stored in your hips. It's stored, like, it's stored in your body. So can you get into a place where you're moving to get it out? One thing that I really love to do that I teach my daughter to do is yell it out. Like catharsis, yelling it out of your body. And I like to take pillows and scream into pillows. like And not like, ah! like like falsetto scream but like ah like yelling it from my core yelling it from my body and just like getting it out I don't know if you've ever had the experience where you feel just so frustrated with the day you're so angry all this stuff is not working your way and it's just like one thing after another after another after another and to finally you feel like you want to explode I used to do that I used to get so mad that I eventually I would just erupt. I don't let myself get to that point anymore. I'm intentionally going to love myself enough to get this out of my body. So one thing that I do is yell. If I'm super frustrated, I grab a pillow and I yell into it. I do this now. I make my daughter do this. I make my daughter punch the pillow. I'll dance around or I'll move my body. I'll do deep breath work. I'm just like trying to process this. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I get to love myself enough not to be held back from by things that are not my fault, things that I'm not in control of, things that maybe not be fair, but they're not going to have power over me. And I'm going to love myself enough to do the work, to do the work, to do the work, to do the work. And step three is allowing myself to let things go. And again, this is going to be a really short you know, process for you. I'm just trying to give you a few steps here that would be really, really helpful because I don't want to see you suffer. And I never think trauma work is over. I think that it's a continuous process every single day. I just want to give you a quick couple tips if you're going through something right now. Number three is letting things go. I want you at the end of every single day to take note of what happened during that day. 
while you're laying in bed, head on the pillow before you go to sleep, can you see things in your day that you can first of all be proud of yourself for? Kayla, I'm proud that you did this, proud that you did that. Hey, you know what you did better with communicating with your daughter today? That was a little bit better. Hey, you did this. Hey, good job. You got this done. Oh, you were your word. You are integrity today. You finished this and this and you told yourself you were going to do that. Good job. And then number two, anything that I could be frustrated with, anything that came at me, anything that like was not in my control, can I give myself permission to let that shit go so that I can sleep tonight so that I don't carry it over to the next day? What does that look like? Okay, so, you know, this person on your team had this situation came up. They didn't handle it well. Oh, my God, that made you look bad. This and this. Okay, <sighs> let it go. Hey, this situation came up personally for you. You know, this happened, this happened. You were triggered by this, this, and this. I'm like, okay, like, <sighs> can I just let this go? Thank you for the lessons here. I appreciate it. I let this go. God, take this from me. I don't have the energy to hold on to this. Can you just take this from me in this moment? And, and I give myself permission to like just be free of all the shit that had happened so that the next morning I can wake up and, and do something that is unlike what my natural nature is to do. I know about you, but I'm not a morning person. Like, mm, nope, not a morning person whatsoever. But the one thing that I do for myself is when I wake up, I try to put a smile on my face and I put my hands up and I'm like, oh my God, I'm so grateful that I'm alive. Thank you so much for this experience today's gonna be a magical day like let's get it and my natural nature is to wake up and go oh my god ew the alarm clock ew and normally I have these crazy ass dreams that tell me that I'm gonna die unless I turn off my alarm um so I really try <laughs> to snap out of it and come into terms with myself the reason why I want to do this is because you get to be an intentional about your days you get to be intentional about your time you get to be intentional about your energy you are are in control of your life. I don't care what is thrown at you during that day. If you can learn how to control you and you can learn how to handle the situations that come up and you can learn how to handle your energy and your emotions, you are going to be unstoppable. I want you to be unstoppable. I want you to know that no matter what comes at you, that you realize how powerful you are, that you realize that you can take anything that comes your way. So again, I just wanted this to be something really fast for you. Um, something small, a few tips that could really, really help you with whatever you're going through, whether you're triggered by something or someone, or whether you just want to intentionally grow to be a better version of you or heal more of you. Number one, play full out. It does not work if you half-ass your yell. If you come and you're like, hi, I kind of want to heal and I kind of don't. And oh, I don't know if I'm ready. Like, no, no, no. Have the courage to face yourself and say, I'm going to play full out. Number two, move your body. Either yell it out of your body or maybe you want to have a traumatic, dramatic cry in your shower, knees on the ground, or you know those movie cries where you like fall up against the wall and you're like, <laughs> and you like cry all the way down. I do those. They're really, really dramatic and <laughs> They're really, really awesome. Being able to do something like that where you're just like trying to get it out. I, I just, I want you to get it out of your body versus you storing it in there. It's not going to serve you inside. And then number three, letting things go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Like fully let it go because it doesn't serve you. Don't bring it into the next day. You are so worthy of starting your day with intention, starting it with gratitude. And if you truly want it to be a better leader, a better woman, uh, and, and grow in your life, you have to be willing to do the uncomfortable, ugly, nasty, not fun stuff. You got to be willing to do it. And, you know, I, I just really, truly honor you for showing up for yourself every single day for you listening to this right now. Uh, please, you know, make sure you subscribe to this. Make sure you, you like it, comment, you know, what you're thinking, comment any type of, you know, trauma release mechanisms that you use. We'll love to hear about it and share this with any woman that you feel like uh, this would honor and this would support. You are worthy of being seen, being heard. You are fucking awesome and powerful. I love you. I honor you. I will see you on the next episode, babe. You got this. Do the work. And I can't wait to hear, you know, how you heal and how you grow. See you soon.